session to finance. It might be um, Bev, but you, as we go along, you'll find out. Um, and at the end of the night, we're actually going to have some time to ask some more questions as well. And just so you know, we are actually recording this session and it will be available on our website um, in a couple of days once we've uploaded it. But um, we're going to begin now by introducing our principal team. We've got Mr. Mark Gow as our principal and our assistant principals, Mr. Michael Melfi, Ms. Jeanette Kalatsis and Mr. Dave Goebel. And I'm going to hand over to Mr. Gow for a principal's welcome. Thanks, Carolyn, and, and good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight, and welcome to Karen Down Secondary College. Uh, you can hear from several people tonight where you'll find out about how our college operates and supports our students and our families. And I want to welcome our 2022 Year 7 students. Believe it or not, you'll be the graduating class of 2027. And that seems a long way off, doesn't it? Uh, but that time will really, really fly by and um, as our current year 12 has just found out last week when we said goodbye to them. So my message uh, to everyone is to make the most of your time with us, you know, engage fully in your studies and get involved in as many areas of the college that may interest you. But we know the last few years have been uh, pretty tough on everyone, but particularly for our students that have been at home for a large amount of time. So as you start secondary school next year, that'll be in the past and we'll be moving forward really quickly. Uh, we'll be working out where you're at with your learning and then targeting our teaching uh, to support your learning and maximise your learning growth. So your part to play in all of this is to put forward your best effort, uh, just as you probably do now in primary school, but best effort every day with everything that you do and come to school prepared every day to learn. really don't want to get to the end of secondary school and you've worked a bit harder. So as you work away up the college, um, we'll support you to work out what you might want to do after you leave school. Uh, and, and what you need to do to get there. That seems a long way off as well, uh, seeing that you're only in grade six now. But uh, this might be a long time, seem a long time away, but the planning uh, for that begins as soon as you start with us in year seven. Now, year seven students are really entering our college at a pretty exciting time, actually, because we're about to build a brand new STEAM centre. And um, I know Mr. Melfi will talk about that later tonight. But this centre is really going to support our students with their um, collaborative problem solving and critical thinking skills and provide support for our students to pursue a pathway, probably one of the most rapidly growing industries in the country, and that's science and technology. So we're, we're really excited about that. And probably one thing that COVID has taught us, and it's taught us a few things, but one of the things that's really taught us is that the benefit of having really strong relationships with our students and families and keeping, keeping open the lines of communication. So, you know, we're in partnership with you, the families and your students, and we, and we really want to take the opportunity if you need to contact us uh, to do so, um, so that we, we can uh, really keep that partnership really strong. And, and most of all, we want our students to really enjoy their time with us. You know, school is meant to be fun after all, and um, a place where you want to come every day. So I look forward to seeing our future Year 7 students in December when we hold our transition day, and then next year when we begin uh, their secondary uh, school journey with us. So uh, thank you for attending tonight. I'll hand over to Jeanette Clark. Thank you. Um, so hi everyone. Um, I'm here to talk to you about the house structure. So we're so proud of our house structure at Carrum Down Secondary College because it provides wraparound support for your child or children um, and it really connects the students to school and helps them to have a positive and fun experience and that's what we really want. So if you think about it, we've got four houses and if you think about it like this, it's like one whole school and we've got four mini schools within it. So we've got Anzac, Gilmore, Flynn and Hollows and your child will be in that house from year seven to year 12. Um, and we find that it's really good because they're connected, they, they get to know the people in their house, the students in the older year levels, and it's really, really um, a nice experience for them. So students, uh, we're in a vertical structure here. So as I said, they'll remain from year seven to 12. Um, but even things like assemblies, um, competitions, and even their locker base, they will be mixed with um, the students in their house. And we find that the older students really nurture the younger ones and, and help them along, along the way as well. I'll move to the next one. 
Um, so school-wide positive behaviour support, so SWPBS, you might have that at primary school. We introduced this about three years ago and it's really about having a positive environment at school and demonstrating the expected behaviours and the positive behaviours according to our college values. So our college values are respect, integrity and effort and if you demonstrate those um those values um, according to our in-class and out-of-class matrix, you are acknowledged and you're acknowledged with a star. So the star is uh, pictured there. It's like a raffle ticket that you would go hand in at your house office because your house office is your one-stop shop for um, everything. And once you hand it in um, and you get quite a few stars, you get to um, get some rewards and some prizes. So it goes from chocolates up to pizza lunches, lunch with the principal, shadowing a teacher for a day. So you go to the star shop on Thursday lunchtimes and you get to um, cash in your stars for rewards. Parents, you will get to see this on um, compass when your child is acknowledged for um, a star for demonstrating the behaviours. Um, obviously, these faces um, won't, you might remember the faces, you might not remember the name. When you get assigned a house, in the house you'll see that there's a house leader, assistant house leader, two of them, and a house support officer. So Anzac is yellow, Hollows, I won't read the names because let's be honest, we'll probably forget, won't we? Flynn House and Gilmore House. So the most probably exciting part of our school is the House Cup. So all the house competitions and activities. So each year, um, each house competes to get the House Cup, so a big trophy. So Flynn House won it this year. They are very, very excited. And you get points. So it's not just based on sport, which is really nice. So obviously we tailor to all students' abilities and interests. So obviously the swimming sports, athletics, the cross country. Then we do lots of quizzes and things at lunchtime and some online quizzes as well. So maybe you'll be part of the winning house next year, as long as you're participating in all of these fun activities. So our student leadership team is such a big leadership team and it ranges from year eight to 12. So have this in mind for when you, uh, you start at year eight level. So we have our college captains at year 12, but we have our junior captains and senior captains. So you can, as I said, be any age to be part of that. So school captains, we have house captains um, for each house. So at primary school, you might have SRC, so Student Representative Council. We don't have that here, but we have so many leaders that they can um, enact change and really push um, some initiatives forward, which we find fantastic. We have arts captains, community captains, learning leaders, sports captains. So there's so many that um, you can take part of um, moving forward through your high school life. Um, I think the biggest part um, with parents, uh, with students transitioning from grade six to seven, it's, it's quite nerve wracking, but it can also be very nerve wracking for parents and carers. And we want to make sure that your child is supported at school. Um, so we have a peer support program. So um, year sevens have mentors. And what's interesting about this year is we normally have the older kids that mentor, but this year the year eight students have really taken to help the year seven students around. So this is another idea for you for year eight. But in, at the meantime, in year seven, you get to have um, a peer support mentor. Um, so you get to do lots of activities and things like that. And this often takes place in our pastoral care program. Um, so in, instead of calling, once they get into um, high school, it will be seven, it might be in seven hollows A, for example, seven HA. Uh, they're in that, we, instead of calling them home groups, we call them pastoral care classes. And this pastoral care only runs once a week. But we build on resilience, especially after the couple of years we had, um, making sure they've got some social skills, building positive connections to teachers and to um, their staff as well. So it's a really good, um, good time for those group activities. And, you know, it's not going to be easy for everyone to transition to high school. There might be some times where you might need a little bit of extra support. We make sure we do Year 7 check-ins um, during term one or the first few weeks of school just to make sure everyone is okay. We have um, a big wellbeing hub where we have lunchtime programs, 
Breakfast Club, um, and we do have some other programs throughout um, if students like to um, participate in as well. We have three counsellors, a mental health practitioner, and we have um, a doctors in schools program. So we actually have a doctor on site every Thursday where students can book in um, for an appointment, and you're you're welcome to accompany them with them to that as well. Um, and we're looking at um, getting psychologists for next year. So we're really putting that support in place, especially, as I said, after the couple of years that we've had. I will hand over to Mr. Melfi now to um, take us through some curriculum. Thanks so much, Ms. Kalatsis. And great to see some familiar names in the attendees list today. It's great to see your, uh, your names there, but I can't wait to see you in person as well when you get to come on site and bring your kids on site. Um, so I'm here to talk about the Year 7 curriculum. I started at Caramdown Secondary College in 2008 teaching Year 7. Uh, it's changed a little bit since then, um, but still the core subjects remain because they're fundamentally important. Um, so obviously you can see the, the list of the subjects that you'll be studying on the screen. Uh, a good amount of humanities and science. Uh, I'll talk about the English and maths because there's a way we do that. It's important that you know a little bit about before you're children come on, um, come to us next year, because it's a little bit different to how we've done it in the past and how other schools might do it. And there's compulsory PE and health. You get two periods of PE each week and one period of health. And when I talk about the word periods, uh, instead of primary school where you're in your class for the majority of the time and you probably go off and do something like specialist, our day is broken up into five 60 minute chunks, which we call periods. So students, on nearly every day except Tuesday, do five 60 minute classes per day. Sometimes you can have a double and do two periods back to back of something where you can really get stuck into something. Classes like science really love having doubles because we do experiments in our labs. Um, other classes such as wood technology also really love having doubles because you can get stuck into making something. And some of the stuff that the Year 7s make is, well, it's better than stuff that I can make at home. So I'm pretty impressed by what our Year 7s can do. Our Year 7s also, Oh no, go back, I'm still on that slide, thank you. <laughs> uh, our Year 7s also do specialist, and so they don't get to choose anything when you come in for our Year 7 year. You pretty much get given a program that gives you a taster of some of the cool stuff that you can then get to choose and specialise in when you get later into your schooling life. So for Year 7, they have a, a selection of art, digital technologies, drama and materials technology. You do two of those in the first half of the year, and then you do the other two in the second half of the year. It does chop and change depending on what class you end up in. But they're great fun. The kids really enjoy it. The teachers really enjoy it. And you do get you get to try some of the cool creative things that we offer at a secondary school. And the other part that's new for next year is our STEAM program. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. It might even be the next slide, I think. So that's something that I'm going to talk about now. Okay, so something exciting for our college is Earlier this year, I believe it was, or maybe end of last year, we got a grant, we were granted some funding to build a new building and develop a new program called STEAM, which STEAM is Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Mathematics, and basically about bringing real world problem solving and developing critical and creative thinking skills in our classroom based around how things work in the real world. Obviously, at secondary school, we have all of our subjects allocated the core information from those subjects is really important. We're not going to lose science. We're not going to lose humanities. But in the real world, all of these come together into how we solve problems and design solutions and work collaboratively and think creatively. And we've got this grant, which is going to result for us in the construction of a new building next year, which we'll show you in a minute. Um, and to go with that new building, uh, we're developing a program that is based around these ideas of STEAM. And the idea is to really build student engagement, to enhance their employability skills, to get them working together. And the really exciting part is our Year 7s are going to be the pilot for this program. So all Year 7s will have two periods per week of STEAM, uh, where they get to try out, uh, I guess, our work in creating this program together. And I will mention, if we flip to the next slide, where you can see just a, um, a digital version of what the building might look like. Um, but we've, we've got student input on this. We've asked the students what they'd like to see in a program like this. We've shown them the plans for the buildings and they've told us some of the things they'd really like to try out and do with some more coding, different kinds of design from creative design, artistic. Uh, students want to work with different materials, which is really interesting. Some of them just want to be creative 
And one of the things is that they, they actually want to have more control over their classroom. So they don't want the teachers telling them what to do. They want to have time working together um, to solve these kinds of problems. So we've taken all that input. We've had our staff look at the building and have a role in designing it. And the building is going to be placed where our current Flynn building is. Now, if you don't know our college, that probably won't help you too much. But for the existing um, families, we'll know where the Flynn building is. Those Flynn portables, the current plan is to move them elsewhere so we can still utilise them. Um, and this building will be built there adjacent to our current science building. And we're very excited because it's been quite a process. I've never built a building before and uh, I still haven't, but I'm part of a little part of that journey in terms of designing this space to really suit the STEAM curriculum program that we're designing and developing with our teachers. And in conjunction with a lot of different other experts where we've been to schools, we've looked at lots of different things. And it's a program we're really excited to be able to pilot with our year sevens for next year. Okay, and I did say one thing I would like to talk a little bit of detail about is maths and English teaching at our school. So we have a targeted teaching program for maths and English. And the reason we picked, uh, we decided to design and do a targeted teaching program uh, three years ago now is we noticed that our results, particularly at some of the top ends, weren't, we weren't pushing some of our students as much as we really needed to be. And sometimes we were worried about some of our students who might have been falling uh, between the cracks, who might have really been struggling to access what we were doing in our normal classes. And so we've kind of redeveloped how we do maths and English based again on a bit of research. But essentially, we have all our classes grouped together and, our, and we do something called fluid grouping where we regularly assess the students in class. Uh, our teams meet uh, in what we call PLCs, it's professional learning communities, but they spend a lot of time meeting and discussing the progress of their students and looking at how, where, where the students' skills fall and where the gaps in those skills are. And then the, the students' groups in their classes can change. So essentially the students' classes across their maths and English can change from time to time, depending on their needs. And there are extension groups, there's a high group, um, there are low groups as well, and there's groups in the middle, and they're fluid in the sense that the students' skills change, um, we change those groups according to their needs. One of the thing, uh, one of the reasons why we do this, and I might flip to the next slide uh, about this, and one of the reasons why we do this is because it allows us to direct extra resources for students who are struggling and need extra assistance to meet, uh, I guess, the benchmarks and aim towards achieving the standards that are set. And the way we give extra resources is, uh, and for next year, how it looks is we've timetabled at least two teachers into every lower group. So the lower group will have the same number of students as normal. Um, usually in our school, somewhere between 23 and 24 is about the number you get. Sometimes it's lower. Um, and in those groups, you'll have usually at least two teachers in the class. So they'll be the main teacher of that class. And then we have what we call intervention or tutor teachers who come in. And if we have students in there who are really struggling. They are identified and the tutor and intervention teachers will work with those students at least six out of the nine hours per fortnight, which we teach. So we've got the extra resources in there to really make sure we're bridging the skills gaps that might exist for some of our kids and make sure that they can catch up and get to and even exceed the standards. That's our whole goal of the program and why we do it. Obviously, at the other end, we have extension as well. So we have a higher group and those teachers are doing work together in their meetings, in their professional learning communities, looking at the standards, looking at how the students who are ready can progress at a faster rate and be ready for accelerated programs later on. And what we can tell you is, even though it's been, we, we implemented this three years ago and we've had two years interrupted by COVID, which makes it kind of hard for us to measure our progress. We've seen in our NAPLAN results this year, some really promising uh, growth results, growth results that are above what we would we would even have hoped for and expected and we're really excited that that means kind of our promise or our guarantee that every student can learn and grow is being delivered through this program and hopefully if we get a year without any too many interruptions it'll be even better again and that's so that's a little bit of our maths and english program and i guess the takeaway points are the groupings change students get grouped according to their needs and to be honest they're usually quite happy about this they know the process they get some say in whether they move up and down and the other part of it is we have a really strong focus on building relationships, both with teachers and with the students when they change groups. And that's one of the risks with the program is changing kids around can, can unsettle them. So we really try to mitigate that risk by spending a real big focus on building relationships with the kids and getting them to know each other as well.
Okay, and I think my last slide is about our music and performance program. So we talked a bit about the specialist subjects of year seven. This is more extra curricular stuff that anyone can get involved in. We really love our year sevens coming in and getting involved in things like um, the music program and our bands and the music tuition programs that we have. We have music tuition, which is available to all of our students. We have uh, free instrument hire. Is it free? It's still free, isn't it, Bev? I should, I should clarify these things before I say it. She nodded, so that's okay. I can't say free and then go back on that. So whatever it is, it's free. Um, but we are, and very reasonable uh, rates in terms of tuition. And then obviously opportunities for the students to be able to perform in bands and showcase their growth at our music nights, which we hold at least once per semester. We also have the production, which is another fantastic opportunity to make friends particularly make friends at, of kid, with kids with different year levels. The production is usually a really fantastic way to get involved in the school. We haven't had one the last two years because of COVID. So we're really hoping that next year we'll be able to get something up off the ground for this. And we also have our, uh, I talked about the music program. Uh, early in the year, there is a try an instrument kind of day or night. It's kind of a bit of both. I think it goes into an evening where all students can come along and try things and just see what they like. And we really encourage uh, anyone who is looking excited about Year 7 or anyone who's even nervous about Year 7 to get involved and pick up some of these things because they're a great way to make friends and learn new skills. And I will pass over to Assistant Principal, Mr. Goebel. Thank you, Mr. Melfi. Um, I get the joy of talking about one of the most exciting things for our new students at the college next year, which is Year 7 camp. Um, We've been running to the same camp out in Kyson for the past four years um, and the students love it. They are exhausted when they come back. It's go, 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 but they love it. We're heading out pretty early in the year next year. So we'll all be right on to paperwork and getting things organised for that. We're heading out in, um, for the last part of the week um, in about week three or four. Um, so 16th to the 18th of Feb. Um, we'll leave from the school at normal time in the morning and we'll head out there and um, the kids will absolutely love it. Um, it it's Look, it's non-compulsory. Um, not everyone has to go if they don't want to, that's fine. Um, we'll still be running a year seven program back at the college regardless. Um, the cost is $350 um, and it, we are hoping to have payments done by the 31st of Jan. Um, that is a camp request, that's a request from the camp just so we can start finalising numbers. Um, it's a huge camp, there's two sides to uh, around a massive lake um, where the kids can run around. They've got, they've got fantastic activities to choose from. Um, they go canoeing, they can build rafts. Um, we get a program sent to us late um, this year. And we'll start working with the camp to finalise that program over the next couple of months. One of the big things that, as um, Mr. Melfi um, alluded to a little bit earlier, the day structure at the school, there are lots of numbers here. So please don't stress about reading them all. Um, our periods run for 60 minutes, um, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. On Tuesday is, I suppose, the big reason we've got this um, table up for us to have a bit of a look at tonight. Um, we start at the normal time of 8.50 in the morning, but our periods are five minutes shorter. Um, and then we have a little bit of a transition in between classes. But the big thing I want to bring everyone's attention to here is pastoral care towards the bottom of the Tuesday, where we run for 45 minutes, as Ms. Colossus spoke about a little bit earlier. But after that, the students are dismissed at 1.50 every Tuesday. We use this time afterwards in the period five to meet in our professional learning communities, which is the, which is where all of our staff sit down, meet and plan what's the best curriculum for all of our students, as Mr. Melfi mentioned with our year seven teaching program. So the big thing we need to just remember here is on a Tuesday, students are dismissed from the college at 1.50 um, the staff stay on site and we continue doing planning for our students for the next cycle of work. We also have a great BYOD program, bring your own device. Um, the big thing here is we need um, our students to be bringing in computers, 
um, and not tablets. So laptops, please don't try and bring in a desktop. It's not going to work for us, unfortunately. But laptops are what we want. Um, any brand's fine. They sit down with our IT team and set up their computer to merge with the school server so the students can use their laptop in classes. They can use it to take notes. They can use it for their textbooks. Um, you can buy electronic copy of your textbook or you can buy um, hard copy or both. Generally, when you buy a hard copy textbook, it also comes with a logon code to be able to use the electronic textbook. I find the best way to use this is textbooks, hard copies can stay at school in the student lockers, um, but then they don't need to take the textbooks home every day when they need to do their homework. What they get to do is just take home their laptop and they can run on a digital textbook at home. Mr. Goebel, can I say something about the computers really quickly? I'm sorry, Certainly I'm not to interrupt. Uh, the only thing I'd say is in your um, flyers, you'll have a, we list a preferred supplier. It's from the education department. We don't receive anything for that. They're called Edunet. And the computers they recommend are really hardy and they wear well for year seven students. I've also bought one for one of my grade two student who needed one through remote learning and I bought it for him because they're hardy and, and we also buy them ourselves as a school for the ones that we loan out um, where, where they're needed. And across many, many years, we have very few problems with them. So it's highly recommended if you're unsure of where to go. That is a great product that we receive no kickback for, but we just know we use them and they're really reliable for a school setting. And if you are going to buy something from another supplier, make sure you get something that wears uh, particularly hard because year sevens are a little bit hard on their laptops and we don't want them breaking. All right, thank you, Mr. Melfi. Um, the school, we look, attendance is probably one of the most important things um, we need to really worry about. Every day matters for our students. We need to have everyone on site as often as possible. Um, falling behind is always really hard to catch up with. We're all going to, we've all seen that over the last two years. Um, so it's compulsory for every student aged six to 17 to be in full-time education. Um, and we pride ourselves on really working with families and the community to keep uh, percentages as high as we can for attendance. Um, we have an attendance expectation of 95%. Um, it's not the end of the world if we don't meet it, but that's our expectation and that's what we thrive for every single day through the house teams. They spend hours every day catching up, calling parents, call, um, chatting the kids, trying to make sure that everything is in place to support the students to come every day and enjoy their learning. Um, really important that open communication with the house to let the team know when your child is away or when they're even going to be late to school. Yes, traffic can be a pain. So being late does happen and it's just about that communication. So we know what's going on. We know where your child is at all times and we stay right on top of our attendance. And the last thing I'm going to chat to you all about today is staying in contact with us over um, on the internet and online. Um, we've got a fantastic Facebook page that posts regularly work from students and all um, information we believe that the community needs to get quickly. Um, we post photos of what's been going on at sports carnivals. It's a fantastic way to stay in quick communication with the college. We also have an amazing website um, that is up and running. So please have a bit of a visit of that. It's got all of our information on it. Compass, some of you will be using Compass in, in your primary school at the moment. Um, Compass is our school management program that we use. We use that with students every single day. All of their lessons are uploaded on the Compass every period. Um, we also email functions through that to send direct emails to teachers of your child or the st students can be, um, are able to send emails directly to their teachers to clarify information from lessons they've run this week or what's coming up next week. Um, it's communication is probably one of the most important tools we need so we can all work together to build a really supportive learning environment for your child and we work very hard at that and I'm looking forward to being able to work with all of you next year on building that. Now I'm going to hand over to Bev, Bev Boys, who's our finance and business manager.
Thanks, Mr. Goval. Um, you've probably got lots of questions about this. We have sent out the school fees in one of the mail that we've done to you. All school fees for next year are voluntary, but we very much appreciate if you pay them. The only ones that aren't voluntary are the carnival's cost and the year seven orientation camp and music if you'd like to go with it. If you've got CSEF, CSEF's $225, which you can use towards your camp, which leaves a shortfall of $125. If you're struggling, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, we want, like all Year 7 kids, to have the opportunity to attend camp and finance not be a reason why they can't. We can often find support for you there. You will note that there's a $50 carnivals and inter-school sport cost. This covers the buses and transport refreshments for our carnivals and also for our cross country and covers bus costs for any inter-school sport activity your student might choose to do so that you're not constantly putting your hands in your pocket throughout the year. Uh, combination locks are $25 next year. These can be purchased at the school or alternatively you can pay for it online and your student will be issued with their lock when they first start. We find that the students that purchase these locks get six years out of them. They're pretty strong locks, hence the reason they're that little bit dearer in the beginning. Instrumental music, as Mr. Melfi mentioned, is $300 for the year. This covers the cost of the hiring of the instrument that's included, your lessons, which are small group lessons each week, and any incidentals that might be required, perhaps additional music, whatever. So the $300 covers a lot there. Um, book list, you should now receive the details on how to order your book list. This came out in the second mail out. And the book lists are all ordered online. You can also go into the shop, but with the shops being closed at the moment, um, and it does get really busy coming up to Christmas and in January, it's often easier to order online. And if you order by Friday the 17th of December, you will get free home delivery. If you're looking towards secondhand textbooks, just to let you know that for humanities, it is a brand new textbook next year, so secondhand is not an option. And for the science textbook, it's also a new edition, same book but new edition. They won't be available secondhand, um, but you do have access perhaps to purchase secondhand, other secondhand textbooks of other families. There's a Facebook page, not run by the school, run by a couple of parents, and it's called Caram Down Secondary College Textbook and Uniform Buy and Sell. Good place to go if you're looking for some secondhand articles and textbooks. Uh, also, if you are struggling, um, please touch base with me and we can often find some support for your textbooks. And particularly, I can often claim through State Schools Relief for two textbooks just to help you on your way. It's really essential that the kids have them, so we'll do our best to help you. Uniform, a uh, uniform list has been forwarded to you. And on that list, sorry, also not shown, we are introducing next year a three-in-one jacket. The, the inner jacket is polar fleece, navy blue. The outer jacket is a slightly lighter fabric. The students have the option to wear both together for extra warmth or one or the other. Um, and off the polar fleece jacket will also be ideal for when they're doing sport because polar fleece has got a lot of give in it. It will keep the kids warm, but it's not going to tear. And we're We'll be introducing a new rugby top as well. They will both be available for purchase um, at the start of the year. Providing this When it comes to the black pants, the shirts and the shorts, you can actually buy these at Kmart or other shops if you would prefer. Um, for girls, we do know that the white shirts that come from Buckswear are a better quality and not see-through, which often they're concerned about. The sports shorts are black shorts, the same as black basketball shorts. So if your student plays basketball and has black basketball shorts, they can wear those. Um, school shoes are lace-up school shoes, no T-bars. We do have a school jumper. 
your choice if you choose to buy it, but we find not a lot of students are wearing the school jumper. Um, they tend to go with the jacket and you will have a choice of two for next year. And the sports top needs to be bought from Buckswear or Dandy Schoolwear as it will have on its outside. In one of the flies that came out, Buckswear have got specialist times suitable if you'd like to go in for a personal fitting appointment and not have to queue. And these are on Thursday the 11th of November or Tuesday the 7th of December, both from 4 till 8. And Saturday the 11th of December, 9.30 till 5. You can go online to book, a unit, book an appointment for your student or alternatively give them a call and they will book, make an appointment for you then. Every student gets a locker next year. But sorry, locks have gone up. That's my fault. Locks are $25 for the locker. And they can take that lock, they keep that locker, lock, sorry, and they use it throughout their six years. Students can purchase food from the canteen before school recess and lunch. Uh, they can pay cash, they can do FPOST. We find a lot of students prefer the FPOST these days. And they can also, before school, go to the canteen and place a lunch order so that they can just go in, collect their lunch, and they're ready to go. It makes it a lot quicker. Cafe 263 is open to our year 11 and 12 students and also to the public. We recommend you come in, have a copy, coffee, perhaps a slice or something to eat. There's lots of toasties. Good place just to chat with others um, and get to see another side of the school. We do have students in there that do help from time to time and the students also make a lot of the slices. With regards to the computers, the school, if you do not have one or struggling to purchase one, please touch base with me. We can provide, assist you with laptops to support. And for those of you with, with students at Rowellan, you can bring your Rowellan primary school laptop to the school. Our IT department does a couple of adjustments to it and the students can continue to use it. They will get another couple of years out of that. If you are a healthcare card car holder, which means you're eligible for CSEF, we have sent out the package. You can get through State Schools Relief, a year seven starter uniform pack, which includes shirts, a shirt, pants or shorts, or a summer dress, and a pair of lace-up shoes. If you choose to go that way, the sooner you get your order back to the school, the better off, because um, we get it through quicker. And I strongly recommend that you measure your student according to the sizes on the order. Because State Schools Relief sizing is a little bit out of whack and often smaller. And so it's, even if it's not what you think your student is, go with what the measurements are. Works best, please. Okay, thanks for that, Beth. Um, so the first day that all Year 7 students will be at school is the Year 7 Orientation Day on the 7th of December. There's lots of sevens in that conversation. Um, so that's Tuesday the 7th of December this year. And what happens on that day is all of you come to Camdown Secondary College. We meet in the gym and we have there's an assembly and you'll actually find out what your class is and you'll go off and spend the day doing fun activities and you'll get to know around the school. Um, meet some different kids from other schools, meet a whole lot of teachers. Uh, what also you need to do is just come in your normal school place. Um, so what you, yeah, your private school uniforms, bring your lunch, a snack, just a pen and a notebook because there might be some activities you need to write down and things to do. You can actually bring some money for the canteen if you want to because the canteen will be open. So it's your, your chance to actually experience a bit of canteen food as well. And then at the end of the day, you can, we'll meet back at the gym and you can be collected from the gym at three o'clock. Um, so after that, the next time you'll probably be coming to Calm Down Secondary College will be for the very first day of year seven in 2022. So what that looks like for you guys is we'll all meet at the gym again and then you'll just have to say goodbye to the family and they can go home or they can go and have a coffee in Cafe 263. We'll have a very short assembly and you'll get, we'll remind you of your classes again. And then what you do is you'll go off and we'll have an induction pastoral care session and you'll get to meet some of your teachers, your real teachers for next year. 
you might get your locker, your locks, your diary, your timetable. And then you're actually just going to do some things to get used to what it's like being in year seven. Don't panic because we're going to actually show you about how Compass works, how to read your timetables. You'll actually get your timetable for year seven as well. Um, and then obviously if you've got any questions about the day, that's a great chance you can actually think of things you want to ask and, and come back to us later if you've got something else to ask. But we actually suggest that you only really bring maybe a pencil case and a, an exercise book. You're not going to need all of your textbooks on the very first day of school and it's a lot of stuff to be carrying around. So just bring a couple of things and then you can just gradually bring them as your subject comes up over the week. Like if you've got maths on the next day, bring your maths book in and then it just keeps going. So you don't have to bring everything at once, but you're going to have an absolute ball um, and we'll be here very, very shortly. So that basically concludes our presentation tonight and thank you very much for listening. Um, now, if there's any questions, we haven't got any questions there. Um, if anyone's got any questions they want to ask, certainly now is an opportunity. Of course, you can also contact um, the college as well and we can answer any of your questions there. Um, so has anyone else got anything they'd like to offer? Um, Excuse me, Carolyn, can I just add one thing? Certainly. Do you require the new enrolment forms either on or before orientation day, please, just so that we're sure we've got the correct contact details if we need to contact you. So it is necessary we get it back by then and it would be really good if we can have the camp forms by then as well. Thank you. Actually, on the back of orientation day, traditionally we actually also offer some extra orientation for people that might need a little bit of extra support or you're from one of our non-feeder primary schools. We're just in the process of trying to work out how we're going to set that up, just given the, the strange year that we've had. But um, they're an invitation only event. So um, over the next week or so, um, we'll get out to you with some information about what that looks like. But there's some, there are some little pre sessions before the actual orientation day. I will jump in. I've just had a question around um, what supports we have in a place for students that have ASD. Um, Carolyn, maybe you might be a good person. I might just start quickly. We, we have um, an inclusion team at school, so an inclusion leader, um, and also Carolyn will be assisting as coordinator of that. Um, and Carolyn, maybe just um, what, what things do we put in place for, for students with some additional um, needs? Additional needs, certainly. So part of this, this transition process, we actually do a pretty major handover with all the primary schools. So we had a whole lot of information, and we've been doing that for the last month or so, and it's just building up. We'll have like a portfolio of what your, your child's needs are. And then when they come into the college, and obviously we'll have a conversation with yourself. And if you've got any questions, please contact me between now and orientation day. Um, and I can certainly have some like more personal conversations with you. Um, but we'll set up a plan, look at what your needs of your, your child are, um, whether they actually currently have support in class, what their supports look like in primary school, and try and translate that in to make the transition into high school as easy as possible. Um, and obviously every one of your child is an individual and they've all got different needs and they need to have things addressed differently for them. Um, so we're more than happy to work out a different plan for them. If they're funded, they might already have sort of a support person that works with them. Um, there's a whole lot of different scenarios. So at, um, we definitely do have a lot of stuff in place. Does that answer your question? We'll go with that for the moment, but we'll be in touch as well early next year um, to, to yes, support. Definitely. Um, can we just go over the laptops again? Um, where do we purchase them from um, and how do they go about that? Okay, I can do that. So in the enrolment packs, there's a flyer that outlines our BYOD policy and also makes a recommendation for a company called EduNet. EduNet are our Department of Education approved uh, recommended supplier. So basically the department tell us these are the people that can give computers. And if you click onto their website, it's really straightforward. They have a few options that pop up straight away that are really good for use at schools. And the one that our school has purchased in the past and has an extensive range of, and we can attest to the fact they're very hard wearing and very functional, uh, they're called the Lenovo Yogas. And they normally retail for somewhere between a six to $700, but that can fluctuate. So that's roughly the price guide of what they are. And 
we use them at school for when we have to purchase computers for different things like testing and for kids who have forgotten their computers and they wear really well. And that's just something that we recommend because we know it's a product that is hardy, is road tested with our kids and works. We do have problems if people buy very cheap uh, and non hard wearing computers or parts easily being broken because obviously students carry them back and forth each day. They are not computers that just sit in an office. They do get a bit of uh, wear and tear on them. And so that's why it's really good to consider uh, the, the hard wearingness of the computer. In the in the what we provide in terms of guides, it does have a minimum specifications guide. Um, and in that minimum spe specifications guide, it'll tell you what the minimum requirements of your computer are, but they are quite basic. So if it's a relatively new computer, your computer will probably meet the specifications. The attention to details around how hard wearing it is. And um, that's why it's something we recommend. I could have said, long story short, EduNet, yeah. but I gave you a two minute version instead. Um, while I've got you, Mr. Melfi, how do you how do you know what student goes in what targeted group for English and math? So how do they get get grouped? We test them, um, essentially. So when they join us, um, we do get some information from the primary schools, and we do we don't really test them on orientation day, but we try to get them to write something down and have a bit of a look at what they can and can't do. But no, when they come to us. We do assess them. Um, we do pre-tests for all of our topics. Uh, we do something called formative assessment where we give them little things that might not even look like tests, but little kind of measures to see what they can and can't do at different times. And then at the end of the unit, we kind of come together and have a look at the student's growth. We identify students who may be having difficulty and aren't growing the way we want. And at that point, we make some decisions about what group they're in and who needs what sort of intervention and help. I guess the model of the story is we, we tend not to do a really big, you know, formal assessments. You're not going to have to come and do a 60 minute test, but we do assess the kids regularly and they get really used to this idea. They quite like doing pre-tests because they know that if they do well in a pre-test, it either gets them to skip some steps they already know. So it doesn't kind of, the kids don't feel like they're being held back and they quite like the process of the pre-test and then getting their post-test scores back and seeing how much they've grown. So it becomes quite a positive thing. So. We, we basically assess and measure their progress regularly and based on how they're going, we, we make changes to the groups. We also ask the kids. So I teach one of the low groups of year seven maths this year and I had a couple of kids who I, I thought were pretty well settled in my class, but they were doing really well. And I said to both of them, I said, guys, you're actually doing really well. You know, your growth is huge. It looks like you're ready for a higher challenge. Would you like to move up a level? One said, absolutely. The other one said, no, I like it in here. I'm comfortable. And so they both got their wish. So it's kind of also the student voice plays a bit of a role too. If a student is happy and settled, they're not going to just move them willy nilly. We like to have a chat with them and find out what they want. Thank you, Mr. Melfi. Um, another question probably for you, Carolyn. So when um, will students have people like their friends in their class from primary school, at least one friend? How do you how do you kind of work that out? Um, yes. <laughs> um, now, the way we do it is we actually get some information, a little bit of information from the primary school as to about how people work really well with each other and some people that don't necessarily. Um, we obviously do have a, a system where if you've got a sibling at the college and they're in a certain house, you want to actually go into that house. So you might have a situation where your best friend is in Anzac and with an older brother and your older brother or sister is in the hollows. So unfortunately, you'd probably be in different houses. But you'll actually see each other in a lot of classes as you go across the day anyway. So you will see people. We do try and put at least one person, maybe two, depending on the numbers, with within the same groups. So yes, we definitely try and accommodate sort of, we don't want everyone to go in and think, oh, there's no one we know. Um, but we try and work it out on a very fair, fair basis to, to help everyone out. The other positive with the targeted English and maths groupings is yeah. you do see more a, a, a huge, more of a variety of students and your friends as well. But we, yeah, as as Carolyn said, we really try to make sure you're with yeah. someone you know, so you have that comfort next year um, to go through, especially through Year Seven together. Did anyone else on the panel have any questions that needed to be answered? Um, I just have one too about someone uh, missed me and asked about. Um, our counselling services at the college. Um, obviously, we do have a whole lot of information. They wanted some more information on it. 
We obviously don't have a lot of information in this presentation, but if you probably want to give the college a call and we can actually discuss some more personalised things around what your particular needs are um, and um, we can let you know the best way to go about things. Yeah, perfect. We've got a wellbeing leader at the college, so yeah. that would be the perfect yes, person to exactly. talk to around that. And they'll also be in part of the transition process as well. So, yeah, that would be great to know. Oh, that was a question too. What date is the first day of term next year? It's a good question uh, because we might be putting an extra a curriculum date at the start of the year. So um, it's highly likely that students will then start on the 1st of Tuesday, the 1st of February is the, is the plan, but we will notify you. Don't worry, we will notify you on the start date, but it is highly likely it will be that 1st of February on Tuesday. Um, is asking, are there more so if you are requiring more transition sessions, so we um, please contact the college. We, we'll yeah. contact the primary schools as well to nominate. They will nom the teachers will nominate people that may need some more. But if you feel you need extra transition sessions, and now we're allowed to, now with the restrictions of ease, we're allowed to do that through November, and we'll, we can notify you of that of the date. So please um, contact the college because we want you to feel as comfortable as possible. Yeah, I was going to say, and just exactly contact the, the Jeanette or myself because we'll be setting up these different plans over the next few weeks. And hopefully they'll happen in November going into just before this statewide orientation date. So it'll actually be really nice. Excellent. Look, we might finish there, but if you have any more questions or if you need to revisit the presentation or even other families you know um, that miss the night or anything, we've got it recorded. So it's going to go up on the website. Um, so please um, feel free to have a look over it. Contact us at the college. We're happy to answer any questions. Um, there's lots of information and there's probably more um, that you need to know as well that when you ask, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you. So um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And uh, we look forward to seeing uh, your children or child on um, 7th of December. Thank Perfect. you, everyone. Well, I've not seen it. Thank you.